we will reconvene the regular session of our Board of Education meeting from March the 25th. This is Trustee Field, will you uh, call roll please? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Briggs? Here. Mr. Cathel? Here. Dr. Hattier? Here. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Neal? Here. Mr. Peden? Here. Mrs. Pryor? Here. Dr. Statler? Here. Mrs. Taylor? Here. Mrs. Wright? Here. We do have a quorum. 3.02, approval of the agenda for March the 25th. I need a motion. So moved. We have a motion of a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. And now if we would all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Three point oh four Indian River Student Government Report. When I'm here to represent the Indian River High School Student Council as an active vice president. In winter sports, finishing up with Unified Basketball Team basketball, making it to the second round of playoffs, basketball and winter, bas winter basketball and wrestling had a fantastic season. At the end of February, the spring sports started up. Freshmen were eager for high school sports and seniors were excited to finish their high school career with spring sports. In March, the clubs competed in competitions. The, the drone club competed in competitions on March 2nd and some members had the possibility to move to regionals in March, in May. Also, BPA and FFA had state conference they performed greatly. The Drama Club had a fantastic talent show on March 14th. The National Honor Society have a fundraiser to raise money for the club March, February 23rd to March 8th. The National Honor Society had a road cleanup on March 23rd. It was a great way to clean up the environment. The Envira Act and Student Council are planning to come together and have a beach cleanup on April 21st. The advisors for clubs are looking for new officers for the 24 to 25 school year. Interested students are busy with applications. During this time of the year, students are, seniors are getting ready for college applications results and determining what their future brings. Applying for scholarships while well, juniors just took the ACT, I mean the SAT, and are waiting to hear back with their scores. Sophomores are excited to hear with their scores with the PSATs. Indian River sophomores and juniors are planning to do college tours at Salisbury University and the University of Delaware. The yearbook is finishing up with all clubs have already taken their club photos. Indian River School District students are eager for spring break. Students are preparing for AP exams in May. The, stu the seniors and juniors are eager for prom on May 4th to have an amazing time dancing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Three point oh five, the approval of the regular session meeting minutes for February the twenty sixth and also for the executive session minutes of February the twenty sixth. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That is unanimous. 4.4 4 is recommendation, or excuse me, recognitions. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. Our first recognition this evening is Selbyville Middle School's Sussex County Junior Honors Band. I believe Mr. Forgen is here to 
uh, read our names this evening. Thank you, Mr. Forgent. At Selbyville Middle School, we recognize the importance that the visual, uh, the, of the visual and performing arts uh, in our students' education. We're fortunate to have talented student musicians here this evening to be recognized for their participation in the 2024 Sussex County, Sussex County Junior Honors Band. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of our amazing SMS educators, our band director, Mr. Clayton Reap. Thank you, board, and thank you, Mr. Fortune. And first off, thank you, students, for your time, your dedication, and effort. <coughs> Talent is created, and through your hard work and your effort, you have made all of us at SMS proud. Please come on up and receive your congratulations, Ms. Mira Alone, Ms. Gabrielle Rebels, Alex Stower. Mark Capo. Liam Ogilvie. And Kevin Yang. Okay, continuing with Sussex County Honors Band from Southern Delaware School of the Arts, Dr. Evans. Uh, I'm joined. I'm joined on stage by uh, Melody Onischuk, our instrumental music teacher, and I'm going to let her explain what students had to do to actually qualify for this. Good evening. I'm honored to be here tonight to recognize three outstanding students whose dedication, passion, and talent have brought pride to our school through their participation in the 2024 Sussex County Honors Band. These students had to go through an audition process in order to be selected, and then they participated in a two-day festival at Sussex Central High School last month. If you could come up when I call your name. Edward Tontianco. Uh, Kylie Onischuk. and Leslie Benavides.
remainder of our recognitions this evening are Indian River High School. So I see Mr. Williams is joining us. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Dr. Owens. I would like to ask our band director, Ms. Deanna Zekin, to join me to help pass out certificates as we honor senior all-state band. I do know that some of our students are currently in the gym, so if you're not here, we will make sure you get those. We will start with our senior all-state band, Grayson Howard. Lexine Zolo. Wyatt Snyder. Nicholas Anschuk. And Nicole Carter. Next, we have Senior County Band. We'll start with Grayson Howard. <laughs> Isabel Winooski. <laughs> Amina Atkins. <laughs> Lexine Zolo. <laughs> Allison Swartz. Xavier Hernandez Sandoval, Evan Forgen, Wyatt Snyder, Shanila Gaines, Nicholas Onschuk, Nicole Carter. I'm gonna call these names, I think a few of these may be in the volleyball game, but Logan Truitt, Cassidy White, Noah Coleman, Zachary Hearn, Aiden Schwab, Joaquin De Lo Rios, Next, we have Junior County Band, Caitlin Kopp, Maria Callis, Shane Forgen, and Noah Naden. They're in volleyball.
Next, we'd like to recognize a student who is a Carson Scholar recipient. Carson Scholars are given to students who excel academically and are dedicated to serving their community. It is a $1,000 scholarship, and this is the fourth year in a row that this student has received this prestigious honor. Evan Forgen. Next, we have first team all conference for the winter sports season. If you are here, when I call your name, if you would please come forward. For girls basketball, Maya Whittington. For boys swimming, we have Alex Arnold and Logan Dawson. I do not think they're here. And for girls swimming, we have Amina Atkins, Cassidy Bonor, I might have pronounced that wrong, Emily Davis, Julian Griffith, Mason Hockman, Elise Moore, Natalie Moran, Paola Munez Garcia, Heather Smith, Next category. Just hold tight. We also wanted to recognize a first team all conference for our unified basketball, Elmer Hernandez. Next, we have academic all-conference. These students maintained a 4.0 grade point average during the winter sports season, and they're recognized for their academic performance in the classroom. We will start with girls basketball. We have Olivia Evans, Abigail Bertling, Alexandra Davidson, Kalista Rogers. For boys swimming, Sam Beebe, Harrison Benner, Logan Dawson, Kay Donnelly, and Kieran Powell. Next, we have Amina Atkins, Cassidy Boner, Emily Davis, Julian Griffith, Mason Hockman. I think I've had you up here twice. Heather Smith. Paola Munez Garcia. Harper Stanley. And Natalie Moran.
Next category we have is Unified Basketball. Luke Williams, Braden Bennett, Elmer Hernandez, Donald Lingo, Jillian Colburn, Trey Hill, Reese Forey, and Joseph Tagliento. Our last category is wrestling. Liam Cooper, Brandon Diaz Bastilio, Shane Forgen, Christopher Givens, that Shane, come on down, Brandon Morales, Jasmine Mayfield, and Joel Wise. At this time, we'll move on to 5.01, that's public comments. The Board of Education welcomes the opportunity to hear from the public during our public comment session at the beginning and the end of each public session. Members of the public speaking as individuals or a member who represents an organization will be allotted up to three minutes. As per our board policy B, D, D, H, Speakers may offer objective feedback or criticism of school operations and programs, but the board will not hear complaints about school personnel or other persons at a public session. We thank you for adhering to this policy and sharing your comments. Thank you. Heather Perfetti. Good evening. I am the proud sister of Christina Perfetti, former principal of Howard T. Ennis, who passed away on February 2nd, 2021. As you know, I spoke at the ribbon cutting ceremony on October 3rd, 
2023, just a few months ago, standing with her son, who is with me tonight, as well as her parents at the invitation of the district. I am here today because someone or some group made a decision to remove Christina Perfetti's name from the annual golf tournament created in her memory that was to ensure that her legacy lived on in supporting the students of Howard T. Ennis. My family supported the tournament in 2021, 2022, and 2023, showing up each time with my speaking to the crowd and even being interviewed by the local media. It was immensely successful, and it brought to Howard T. Ennis and its PTO in excess of $20,000. With that in mind, I asked the PTO president for an accounting of the funds in January of 2013 because I wanted to ensure on behalf of her family that the money raised was being used how it should be and how we promised everyone that it would be to benefit the children and the families. This was especially important since the PTO officers, those approving or denying the use of funds, were and remain staff, reporting to the administration, one of whom is also an active member of the PTO requesting the use of those funds. This time of year, which follows all of the painful memories of my sister's collapse and death, we would all be gathering to celebrate her through the golf tournament. But instead, this year, I explained to her son how someone changed the plans for us. So with her name removed and questions arriving, and as you all I hope know by now, this year's tournament was simply canceled altogether. The administration and the district distributed a script for everyone to stick to. I only know this because of my Freedom of Information Act request, known as FOIA. I was given a box with 1,340 printed pages for which I paid $362.25. 30 seconds. The sufficiency of the response to my FOIA request remains a topic of discussion. I do not see a vote to remove her name, and I do not see an accounting of the funds, but I do see thousands of dollars spent on staff t-shirts. I hope you share an interest in understanding how her name was removed. I hope you hold an interest in how donations were sought when her name was removed and few knew. I also hope you have an interest in how over $20,000 is spent in your district in collaboration with the PTO. Pay attention to the intersection of staff and administrators influential in a PTO and decisions relating to resources that impact students and their families. Most importantly, I hope you find a way to honor those in your district most appropriately when they pass away. No one talking to my family about the golf tournament while promoting it as the fourth is not only outrageously disrespectful, but it is disheartening to us as her family, to the students, family, and community whom she served, and they all deserve better. Thank you. Thank you. New Business 6.01 School Choice Applications for 2023-2024 School Year. Mr. Lewis. Good evening, everyone. On your board docs this evening, you will see a total of 20 school choice applications for the 23-24 school year. We are asking to accept 18 of those school choice applications decline one due to discipline and decline another one due to attendance. So again, we are asking to accept 18 and decline two. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, any questions? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Six, oh, sorry, go ahead. 6.02, school choice applications for 24-25. You will see a total of 32 school choice applications. We are asking to accept 30 and decline two due to discipline. So moved. Second. Any questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 6.03, constable uniforms. Mr. Lewis, will you um, join us again at the podium? Uh, at our recent finance committee meeting, we discussed and uh, viewed the suggested new constable uniforms. As Mr. Lewis explained, the others are uh, in need of updates. Mr. Lewis, can you share? Sure, be happy to. Um, as many of you have seen our constables working throughout our school district, we have been um, ordering a uniform for many years um, under the title of proper. That's the name of the uniform. And for the last three years, probably, uh, the uniforms are not lasting. Uh, we're finding our guys are uh, having ripped shirts, uh, pants that are fading uh, improperly. And so I did some research on a different type of uniform. And um, it's a uniform that's called First Tactical. Um, if you see on your board docs, it's a different color, and we're going with the tan pants. And we feel that this uh, the uniform that you are seeing with the black shirts is a better grade of uniform. And uh, we're working with a company, a local company, America First Responder, in the, out of Millsboro. These uniforms do look nice that you suggested. We did add the American flag. Correct. And um, I would vote that we support it. So moved. We second. have a motion second. of a second. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. 6.04, we are IRSD Community Festival. Yes, Mrs. Nika Reed is going to share uh, some information related to an, an upcoming festival that our team has been working on for quite some time now. We're really excited about it. Mrs. Reed, good evening. Thank you. Thank you. So tonight I am presenting our district-wide plan for uh, We Are IRSD Day, a community festival, and I do believe you have a flyer before you. Um, as you can see that the date that we are proposing is Saturday, October the 5th. Um, we hope to hold this at the grounds of um, Sussex Central and Howard T. Ennis School. Um, this is a free event and we are looking to be able to host transportation opportunities from various elementary schools. Um, our district community advisory board uh, came together and made some uh, suggestions and this was one that we definitely uh, put our ear to to listen. Um, our district community, uh, excuse me, our district equity steering committee uh, during our summer retreat uh, really loved this idea of being able to host a district-wide event uh, which would be able to bring our community stakeholders together and celebrate all things we are IRSD. Um, and so this definitely aligns with our 23-28 um, IRSD strategic plan, which uh, is about building connections and relationships with our community stakeholders, fostering learning and uh, personal growth uh, for our students and families, strengthening our community bonds and encouraging community engagement, and promoting the implementation in equitable, sustainable, and student-centered programs and interventions. And so tonight, as you uh, take a look at this flyer and think about all the things that great things that we would be able to do with this community event, I'm also asking for your support. Um, it, to be able to pull off an event like this, it does take a lot of connections and relationships within that, the, the community. And I'm sure that each of you know five that you would be able to recommend to us to be able to extend our arms, to invite, to be able to participate in making this a wonderful event for the Indian River School District. And so I will be contacting you. I'll be reaching out to you via email and even by phone. And please don't disappoint me by saying no, because I'm certain that you have something that you can give. And I do believe you'll show up. I know that you will be there to attend and have a really great time and engage with our community stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I should ask, do you have any questions? 
Hearing none, thank you. <laughs> we have 6.05 facility assessment tool, repair and maintenance plan. Mr. Dooley? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so as far as an update and timeline on the facility assessment tool and maintenance plan, in January of this year, the state directed the Department of Education to establish a facility evaluation and assessment process. This assessment process would help school districts assess facilities in a standardized way. By May 1st of each year, each school district is required to provide this assessment along with the board approved repair and maintenance plan. Thus, our current work effort on this is due May 1st, 2024. For the past month, Indian River School District schools have been working diligently on completing their facility assessments. These are currently complete due to the combined teamwork of our building chiefs, custodians, and skilled craftsmen. And I would add, with help and guidance from school administrators, our IT department, and uh, especially our Buildings and Grounds Specialist, Mr. Steve DiGirolamo. Uh, we are currently preparing the repair and maintenance portion of the work next. Uh, and I'd note that the state has acknowledged that there was no standard format for this uh, maintenance plan part of it. Rather, they've given, up, given us some uh, brief guidance as to what they're expecting. So with that being said, our critical path dates moving forward um, well, and looking in the past a little bit, we had the buildings, recent Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting where we uh, showed an example of what one of the school's facility assessments look like. It's quite an extensive spreadsheet, and then there's one of those for every school. At, tonight is the school board meeting for March, so um, I'm making a presentation about this schedule for submission. Uh, at our April 15th Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting, will be presenting the uh, facility assessments and that maintenance plan. And then at the April 22nd school board meeting, uh, we would ask for approval for the facility assessments and maintenance plan so that we can meet the deadline for the May 1st uh, submission to the state. Does anybody have any questions at this time? I'd like to add that uh, Mr. Dooley, as soon as he walked in the door, uh, this was on his desk waiting for him. And this is a big state initiative, uh, something brand new that's uh, somewhat complex and uh, requires a lot of time and energy. So he wasted no time. And I thank you, Mr. Dooley, for getting into the schools, not only introducing yourselves, but um, digging into this tool. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing those results. Thank you. Okay, 6.06, .06, and I think you stay right up there, Mr. Dooley, for North Georgetown Elementary, Shade sale for snack garden. So if I may uh, take 6.06 .06 and 6.07 together, um, they're virtually identical uh, projects and, and funded through the same uh, source. It's the North Georgetown. So I'll say the North Georgetown and the Long Neck Elementary Sunshades. Uh, these items were discussed at the recent Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting. There were concerns over the wind speed rating. So I've contacted a certified playground installer to provide further recommendation for a structure at for recommendations for a structure that adequately addresses the wind speed ratings uh, funding for both sunshades would be covered through snack grants uh, if there are no further questions I'm getting ahead of myself time yeah. yes so does anybody have any questions about that we would be seeking board approval to move forward with the use of a certified playground installer to provide the sunshades for North Georgetown and Long Neck Elementary Schools. Question. Okay, the sunshades that you're planning on installing, would they have a higher wind speed rating than the ones that we discussed at the board? Yes. Okay, and what's the difference in price? We don't know that yet. So, and this has a short uh, funding time frame. So I think it's May 15th in order to get the funds, which is why we wanted to proceed with asking for to uh, board approval tonight, and then we have to go ahead and get that uh, quote from that certified uh, installer. And all funds would come from the Snack Garden grant outside of the district, so it would really be um, on them to make a determination of whether they could afford the upgraded, updated uh, um, sale. 
All right. If we don't vote for that tonight to move ahead, um, what are the consequences in terms of timing? So if we wait until the April board meeting, then that's at the end of April. We only have till May 15th. I think that's a pretty aggressive, tight, and probably impossible time frame to get that work done by Okay, then. so they would have to put in for the, the grant once we approve it? They, they've, already words, received, they've already received the grant. They just want to use the funds for, the grant is for a sunshade. It's, but the, the first one didn't meet our standards, so. Right, it did not. Mm -hmm. Okay, under the circumstances, I'll make a motion that we accept that. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh -oh. You might be standing. 6.08 is John M. Clayton, Healthy Kids Wall Mural Request. That's right. So uh, the John M. Clayton uh, uh, Elementary School, the, the wall mural, there's an attachment for this in your uh, board docs. So we're seeking approval for an item reviewed at the Buildings and Grounds Committee for a painted wall mural that reads, let us grow at JMC, if you get the fund. Uh, funding is through donations from the local women's club. Any questions? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This, that is unanimous. Sorry, this is the Lord Baltimore Women's Club? That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just being clear on who's taking the effort to do it. 6.09, Lord Baltimore Elementary Natural National Blue Ribbon Sign Installation. So for this item, there's also an attachment in your board docs. So we're seeking board approval for an item reviewed by the Buildings and Grounds Committee for utilizing the old brick school sign structure to mount their blue ribbon school sign for everybody to see and take pride in. The majority of the funding will be covered through school fundraisers. However, the principal indicated that there may be a shortfall of $800 or less. If so, we would seek approval to use student activity funding to cover the shortfall. Therefore, if there are no questions at this time, we'd be seeking approval for the board to move forward with that project. And, and if I could add, um, I think it's a really good use. There was, for those of you that will recall, there was an existing sign there that um, we took down to add the new electronic sign. So what was left was just the brick structure. So I know the school worked to try to determine how to best utilize those bricks. So I think um, the sign here that they've chosen really looks nice there. And uh, the town, Ocean View did grant uh, the approval to have that additional sign, which really highlights that blue ribbon. So I think it looks good. So moved. Second. We have a motion and, ex and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is your motion carried. That is unanimous. 6.10. New Sussex Central High School change orders. So, um, let's see, the next two, 610 and 611, both cover uh, change orders at the new uh, Sussex Central High School. There is an attachment for 610 uh, in your board docs. We're seeking approval for changes to a change order, which the board had already uh, approved previously. Mr. Brad Callan of R.Y. Johnson is here to share an update with the board. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the first one is the 6.10L which is, I don't have a PDF of it, but uh, the board approved this for the auditorium renovations. When the board approved it, it was at $1.4,112,723. Uh, but when the actual change order was issued, they transposed a number. So the, the correct number has been carried in our log. It is in our, our accounting. It was just a pay, paperwork item. And in talking with Jay, Karen, and, and we all got Dr. Hattier, we felt it appropriate to bring it back for the board to say that there was a transposed number. We now have the correct um, change order in front of you this evening so that when you go back through the accounting, everything checks out. So that's what we're doing here this evening for that particular change order. So we're just asking for approval for acknowledgement of that, that error on that change order and to move forward. The, the, the uh, amount of money went, what, down as a result of the transposition or up? We always carried the uh, correct number 
but the the number the changer that was issued was less than what the approved number was okay so moved second we have a motion and a second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed that is unanimous 6.11 Okay, so again, uh, this is for change orders for the Sussex, uh, New Sussex Central High School. Uh, in your board docs, so follow with me here, please. There's going to be seven change orders that Mr. Cowan's going to review. There's two attachments. So six of the change orders are under one of your PDF attachments. And then the, uh, the other uh, PDF attachment in your board docs is for the one standalone change orders. That's kind of being handled here. We're trying to push that through so we can get materials ordered. So, right. So the one, the one that Joe spoke of, uh, the standalone, is the. Um, hold on a second. I don't have those PDFs. I have to look through my log. So that would be change order B11-04. And we discussed this at the building and grounds. We also had a meeting last Friday to review all of the changes to finishes, floor finishes, wall tile. Uh, we had a very good meeting that day uh, with Dr. Hattier Legold was involved with that along with Jay, Judy, and the design team along with Tammy. So what we were able to do was we were able to work with the district, revise some finishes, floor finishes that everybody is happy with and acceptable and realize a credit of just shy of $69,000. So we're asking for that review and that approval this evening on that one. And I can go through the others that are in the larger PDF with all the change orders if you have any questions on, on any of those. Any questions? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. And we might add at this moment, and I'm not sure if Jay was going to do that. I don't want to take his word for it. Go ahead. But we are, we just want to go on record of being appreciative of R.Y. Johnson for looking outside of the box and thinking outside of the box and doing some value engineering. Because when this project started, we went to referendum and we had the money for it. But because of market pressure, it grew out of range from what the monies were approved for. <clears throat> so there were things that we were not able to uh, fund for the school at that time. So slowly but surely, one by one, alternates are being put back in there for the school to be as it was proposed in the referendum. We're not there yet, but we're, we're closer. <laughs> we're, you're right. We're, we're not there, <laughs> but we're not done. <laughs> so. Um, Brad, I just want to say thank you to you and your staff. We appreciate everything that you're I doing for us. I appreciate that. They're working very, very hard, and they're just not building the building as it's drawn. They're looking everywhere to mm -hmm. see where we can save money to put more alternates back into the building. So, and I, I re we really appreciate that, and I'll pass that on to our team. It's not just me. It's We have a great team out there constructing the building and back in the main office as well. But I do want to just throw a number at you. Since the beginning of the project, uh, with value engineering, and savings and contingency, we've been able to put back into the project $2.6 million in alternates. So that's that's a real that's a real plus for the school district. And we're continuing to find more money with help from uh, Tammy and Jay and Karen and all their efforts with the legislator too. So hopefully we can we can find some more and afford more alternates. The next one on the target is the auxiliary gym. So yeah, I also want to thank you guys for uh, working with the uh, the outside insulation padding that got ruined in the rainstorm about a month and a half back. Um, these guys are actually going through each one of the packages carefully reusing what we can and uh, rather than simply ordering everything new, uh, they're making it work in a, a very time sensitive manner. And I, I'd also like to comment on the funding. I believe it was the state sent somebody down to see how much money we actually needed. And we were asking for like 25, 27 million and I think the state came back saying we needed 30. Um, which we're not getting either. The state, of course, buried that one really quickly uh, because they didn't give us the money. But you guys are making it happen regardless. All right, well, and that's yeah, in we're, spite we're of what the state has done. And I appreciate that. 
they said that there was about 280 bundles that were damaged. Uh -huh. So we're methodically going through each bundle with our yep. crews. Uh, if we have a four by four sheet and only a foot of it was damaged, we cut the foot off and, and package it back up and send it to the roof. Right now, we've been able to salvage over 50 bundles, which equals about $50,000 yes. in savings to the district. Which so, takes you guys extra time and effort, and it is appreciated. Yeah, thank, you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thank Brad. You. Then we have 6.12, that's Howard T. Ennis, change order. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Howard T. Ennis change orders, there are two. There are attachments for those in your board docs. And we are seeking approval for the two change orders for the reference project. And Mr. Uh, Cowan is again, I'll take the microphone to explain it. I'm back. Uh, these two change orders wrap up uh, the Howard T. Ennis project. The first being uh, there's $33,000 for CCR reports. CCR reports are certified construction reviewer. It's a DENREC requirement that the site gets reviewed by a, certified, by a CCR person once a month. And once we had substantial completion, it should end. But as you recall, the greenhouse project continued mm -hmm. on due to material deliveries and so on. So those CCR reports uh, went on beyond what the contractor would normally have to to pay for it. So uh, we negotiated an end date with DENREC. They allowed us to stop the CCR reports. So from the substantial completion to the time DENREC uh, told us we could cease those, uh, it equaled $33,000 in additional charges to that contractor. So we met with them, uh, Joe met with them, and uh, that's, the, that's the final number for that. The second change order is for, I, I believe it's around $2,600, is for some additional paving at the pole barn. Uh, we discovered that as the uh -huh. as the buses came around that loop, they couldn't quite make that turn into the pole barn, so we had to cut out a little bit of curb and add some paving on that corner so the buses could could have a, an easier turn into the pole barn for service. Any questions? Notice how the state always gets their money from us, but they don't give their money to us. Any questions? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> it speaks for itself. A motion to accept? So, so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that is unanimous. Thank okay. you both. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Old business 7.01, major cap planning, major capital planning. Yes, I'll start with Sussex Central High School. The, the, the new Sussex Central, the west side exterior masonry is complete and metal panels are being installed. Structural steel, uh, excuse me, structural stud sheathing continues around the entire classroom <coughs> wing. Rough in of our mechanical, electrical, and ductwork continues in areas D, which is the gym, and is underway in area C of the classroom wing. Mechanical, electrical equipment installations have also begun. Interior, interior metal studs are complete through areas E on both floors, and drywall installation is su substantially complete in area G and is moved into area E. Painting is underway in the cafeteria with mechanical and electrical rooms as well. Roofing at the gym is complete and they are moving into the classroom wings next. Uh, as we've discussed here this evening, I want to thank uh, the board for approval tonight for the flooring alternates. The team did look very closely at all of our flooring options and through these uh, alternates we've been able to save funds that can ult ultimately be applied to other areas of the project. I also want to thank Mr. Neal, Dr. Hattier, and Mrs. Wright for joining us during our recent construction meeting and tour. And moving into 7.02, Howard Tienis, the much anticipated greenhouse electric work is ongoing. Anticipated completion is within uh, April. The sewage lift station upgrade is awaiting parts. However, its anticipated completion is also in April. And negotiations and discussions continue with Artesian Water Company. $50,000 has been discussed as a possible IRSD contribution regarding the meter pit reconfiguration. So those conversations are ongoing. Okay. Thank you. 7.03, GW Carver consent update. Dr. Thurgood? Good evening. I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> 
Um, currently, uh, Mr. Den is working on reaching out to all the former Carver families. Um, he's currently made contact with about five of the families and will continue uh, as the weeks progress to reach out to all the families um, that were initially in part in the uh, consent order. Um, the four families he did speak to gave uh, Mr. Den and Ms. Reed permission to speak to the students. Uh, Mr. Den really wanted to have a conversation with the former Carver students to hear their side of the story as well. So on Thursday, last Thursday, Mr. Den and Ms. Nika Reed traveled to Inverra High School in Sussex Central to meet with the far former Carver students. He asked them to share their highs and lows of their educational journey in the Inverra School District. Um, Mr. Den and Ms. Reed shared that the converse conversations were both positive and impressive. So that was very good to hear coming from um, our students. Um, the Community Advisory Board was held in person on March 21st at Howard Tianis. This was our first in-person meeting in some time, um, so it was great to have everyone face-to-face -face and in-person. It was a positive meeting. Um, Mr. Den shared with the Community Advisory Board his uh, conversations with family members and the former students. Um, we, the district team shared information about the Community Day on October 5th. Uh, the board and the district team engaged in open and honest discussions about the aftermath of COVID, including discipline rates and the achievement gaps. Uh, our team shared information on after school and summer learning opportunities to help deal with those achievement gaps and learning opportunities. And the meeting went so well, everyone's agreed that we would like to continue in person together as a team at the Howard Tianis building. Um, so on April 18th is our next one. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Committee reports 8.01, buildings and grain. Dr. Heading. Okay. Uh, a lot of this has already been covered. Howard Tienes, Sussex Central High School, the change orders. Um, the buildings and grounds support center monthly work order was released, which I have on the back. If you guys want me to cover it, we have 20 open tickets on hold five, parks on order nine, waiting information 15, approved projects threes. This is pretty much where we've been on a regular basis already. Uh, Steve normally gives the good detail on this, but he's not here, so. Um, HVAC CARES on the East Surf Cooling Tower. GUYPE Associates reported to us that minor balancing work at East Millsboro, Long Neck, and North Georgetown is being completed. The tower replacement at GE, uh, Georgetown Elementary, and Philip Chow, or PCS, sorry, are still in the submittal phase, and these submittals will be finalized by GUYPE. Artesian, progress on the agreement continues after the district's last meeting with them. Uh, Mr. Cowan reported that it was agreed that Artesian's equipment will stay in the fire pump room building. Um, Artesian is requesting a $50,000 payment slash donation from the district. This is down from, what, 100 and a half, I think, from a while ago. So at least it's approaching some reasonable number. Um, they've agreed to actually use some of our existing stuff as opposed to building new. The district is still waiting on the final design, which will need fire marshal approval prior to determining final decisions, so no votes tonight. We covered the DOE facility assessment tool, which is actually a really good idea. It's too bad that they came up with it in such a short time period and especially for the new kid on the block to do this in a hurry. He now knows more about the district, I think, than he knew uh, you know, walking in the door and probably more than he wanted to know, but good stuff. All right, um, admin requests were requested, uh, the North Georgetown shade, the Long Neck shade, it's been covered. Uh, John M. Clayton Healthy uh, Kids Wall Mural and the National Blue Ribbon sign. Again, congratulations to Miss Pam and her staff for making that happen. Um, this is always a big deal for us as a district when we get a school like that, okay? And I think that's why we're all here, is to make things like that happen in every building if we can. Okay, and that's buildings and grounds. Next meeting is April 15th, tax day. Alrighty, and uh, we'll report back. Thank you, Doc Hattier. 8.02, Comprehensive School Safety, Mr. Kaffel. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. So doing in service on March the 6th, our district constables visited district schools to, to see the design and layout of these buildings. As many of you know, our constables have only been in the buildings that they have been assigned to. 
doing this, this in-service training permitted constables to have a certain degree of understanding of all district buildings in case of an emergency event that would require constables to provide coverages to those buildings. Uh, Mr. Lewis let me know that he received a lot of positive feedback from our constables and were, they were very appreciative of the opportunity to visit these buildings. On March 15th, our safety committee convened at Indian River High School uh, to discuss research and pricing on safety initiatives, including 3M film, metal detectors, and AI, which is artificial intelligence equipment, to increase safety measures in our schools. The committee agreed that metal detectors need to be a priority with sporting and after school events when large group of guests are entering our school buildings and athletic fields. Further discussions regarding the associated costs and use of safety and security grants funding will occur within the school board. The safety team also discussed increased safety measures for both of our upcoming high school graduations to include required tickets for guests and a change in the previously scheduled evening date and time for Sussex Central's graduation. This decision is due to the large number of graduates and time it will take to convene the ceremony. Following discussions with the Delaware State Police, the safety committee agreed it would be advisable to change the date for Sussex Central graduation to Saturday, June the 1st at 10 a.m. And that's all, ma'am. All right, questions? I have a question. If we're going to change the date like that, is that something that's going to have to come up for a board vote as well? Or yes. Or we just do it administratively? It, no, it's on the agenda here and just a few more items okay. under calendar changes for consideration. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Gaffel. Yes, ma'am. 8.03, uh, finance, Dr. Heavier. Okay, um, again, finance. Uh, some things have already been covered, the constable uniform. Uh, Dr. Brittingham did request the addition of a unified basketball team at Sussex Central High School. She believes the team can be added without a budget increase. Uh, however, uh, we did request that a preliminary budget be uh, created just so we could take a look at it, and that's going to be discussed at the next meeting in, Ap uh, in April. Um, she also announced that uh, to the committee that there had been a $10,000 donation which was received from a gentleman named Craig Robertson for the Sussex Central High School football team, which is incredibly generous. And uh, she's going to be asking if he would like to be recognized at a future board meeting. I think for that kind of uh, a donation, actually any donation, it's, it's a good idea for the board to say, hey, thanks a lot for stepping up. Okay, I hope he decides to accept it. If not, he should be recognized anyway. Okay, and later on, Mrs. Smith, in, in tonight's meeting, will be reviewing the various financial reports, and they will require board action, so I'm not going to cover those now. All right, and that is tonight's report. Thank you. Um, okay. Next meeting again in April 15th. All right. 8.04 curriculum, Dr. Statler. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. Uh, we covered a couple of items. One was the summer school programming, which begins on July 8th and will run until the beginning of August. Uh, that encompasses general education, special education, extended school year, 12 month and the autism program and credit recovery. Many invite letters have already been distributed um, and I believe at the end of April we'll conclude when uh, parents and families should be receiving their invitations. Uh, we also discussed our high school scheduling challenges. I've asked Dr. Jerns um, to just give us a highlight of that and also uh, for Ms. Dorman, when, when she's concluded that part of uh, the discussion, for them both to kind of give us an update on things that the district is doing to improve our test scores across all levels. Thank you. Thank you. So to begin, we did continue our conversation around high school scheduling at the um, last curriculum committee meeting and just wanted to share a few highlights from that conversation with you. So first and foremost, Indian River High School has started the planning process to make geometry a full year course, which was one of the conversations that began at the February curriculum committee meeting. Um, I met with the principals after that original meeting to discuss the concerns that were shared at that February meeting. So Mr. Williams made us aware that they are in the planning process that includes setting aside the unit for that full year teacher as well as finding a qualified candidate to teach that course. We then continued the conversations around questions that were raised with the omnipresent issues with scheduling when you take um, required versus non-required courses in the high school. So um, 
We talked about the many challenges, the decisions that students face when they do have to schedule each year in the high school, um, particularly when it comes to weighted and unweighted courses. Because there is always that, if, if a student is concerned with where they are in class rank, if they're in, you know, they're gonna earn the superintendent's four-year academic award, if they're in top 10, valedictorian, salutatorian, the decisions become more difficult because where you do want to engage in courses, and I can speak personally as a parent to this, where you want to engage in the courses that you enjoy. My daughter loved art. She had to make, make the very difficult decision on whether she took a dual enrollment chemistry for the weighted grade or if she took art. So, um, and this arose when students were discussing the choices with taking band, course, and the weighted courses. So we shared some information around that scheduling and students are faced with difficult decisions. It's not just uh, the band that was raised the night, it's across the board. Um, and so what happens is students are scheduling now for next year. And so as they're scheduling, they list those courses they would like. And once the master schedule is complete, if there are conflicts in those offerings, then the counselors will reach out to those students and say, look, you're gonna have to make a decision and the counselors will meet with the students, have the conversation, talk to the parents if that's necessary, if the child can't make a decision, and help them determine which direction you wanna go. We then continued the conversation into um, the semester schedule itself, and both high school principals were very forthcoming in assessing their staff, their students, about what are the successes of the semester schedule, is this something we wanna continue on with, when we first began this. So a lot of staff shared um, they felt better prepared in terms of preparation for courses because they were teaching less preps than they were when there were eight periods in a given day. Um, the block scheduling allowed for more instructional time and deeper conversations with the kids during one class period. And the admin, the data indicates less discipline referrals related to transitioning between classes because students are moving less throughout the day. When it comes to students, um, focus on four or five courses rather than eight courses, which then has ultimately raised our enrollment in our um, more rigorous course loads, like your AP, your dual enrollment, because kids aren't having to study for eight courses and complete the course loads. Um, it's also increased our work-based learning and shadowing opportunities because there's more time in their schedule to fit those things in. So that's where we carried on with our high school scheduling conversation. And now Kelly and I are gonna update you on some of the work that we've been doing this year. We'll keep it real brief and then our updates each month hereafter will focus on particular projects Before that we're do doing. Before you do that, mm -hmm. do you mind if I make a few comments? Sure. Okay, I appreciate the fact that you're cutting it down to five, but it has also reduced the opportunity for high school kids to do more explorations. I've never been a fan of pathways because everybody at 16 and 17 does not know where they want to be in life and to force them to make that choice early is not necessarily the best idea. So what you've done by going to block scheduling, et cetera, it may reduce some things, but it has significantly reduced the choices the kids have in being, I would call, more broadly educated to the point where they get a smattering of something. Okay, and I don't think that's doing the kids any favors at all. I believe the block scheduling may work better for teachers, but we're supposed to be here for the kids. Now, this is my opinion. I grew up in a totally different environment, and I can tell you that if I had to follow a schedule like what you have there, I would be paying somebody else for almost everything I do in my life, as opposed to what I learned when I was in school. And I do not believe this is doing the kids any favors. I've said this before, and I've said the pathways are not a good idea either. I know we're stuck with them, but I don't think what you're doing is right for the kids. Yeah, I'm the sorry. pathways are a requirement, and um, you know, I can use my daughter as an example. I don't like to talk about anyone else, but um, fortunately, the schools are working with kids the best of their ability. So where my daughter couldn't schedule with art, she was provided an opportunity to take it during her enrichment time. And in the meantime, we don't have a concert band that amounts to anything because they can't practice together, um, and it has reduced a lot of opportunities for other kids. I'm sorry, that is the reality. So I will share um, that with band students, they are given the opportunity to practice together every day for 30 minutes. It's their choice whether they attend that during the enrichment time or not. 
the kids that came to talk to us a couple weeks ago are, I know some of those kids, they're very bright kids. Why didn't they mention that? And why am I getting the same comments from talking to the band director at Sussex Central? We can continue the conversation. Okay, I'm just making the point that this is something that I don't think you're doing the kids a favor with. I mean, I'm, I'm generally very supportive of all the educational mm -hmm. things that happen here. You guys know that. Okay, but the, the whole scheduling thing, the board was never asked whether we wanted to go to block scheduling or not, by the way. They did that to us. They were The board was never asked whether we wanted to go to semesters. I don't remember that coming up, or maybe I missed too many meetings. It I'm would sorry. have been a conversation. Central was the first to move, and it was I know that, and that happened years a long ago. time ago, and having mm -hmm. been on the board now for 20-odd years, I don't remember that one coming up then either. Okay, and as far question. as I'm concerned, some of those things really should be brought to the board's attention um, for us to make the decision rather than um, the educators, or at least it should be discussed. All right, and if we as a board are trying to do something, then we as a board should have the ability to make that decision and not have it thrust on us. Okay, and as you know, me and my mouth are leaving at the end of June, so you guys get to deal with a different group of people, but I don't think you're doing the kids any favors. But well, we always appreciate your feedback. No, it's Thank not you. going to quit after I leave either. Okay? <laughs> Lucky you. And me. <laughs> and the students. Any other questions or feedback about the scheduling? Okay. So with that, um, Kelly and I just want to share, at the beginning of every school year, which we're preparing for that now, is we have a database conversation with schools around what are all of those assessments showing you? That includes national assessments, state assessments, local assessments, such as our common assessments. And asking administrators on what is it specifically as a school you can focus on that would improve teacher practice and therefore improve student achievement. So as always, we begin the year in that course. So this year so far, just to kind of very loosely give you a general idea of um, we, are, we see our jobs as supporting administrators and doing the work with teachers. We are not in the room teaching the students, but how can we support teachers in planning and delivering instruction that is going to get students to a level where they can achieve at their maximum. So this year, so far, we have visited over 150 classrooms through our learning walks. <laughs> And after those walkthroughs, we provide feedback to individual schools and individual administrative teams on what they can focus on as a team. We have also planned and delivered with our departments two district-wide in-service days. She's going to talk a little bit about elementary because we keep the elementary secondary separate because we are focused on different things. And with secondary, we have been focused on how to use the standards to drive instruction and also how to use that data to drive instruction. And then I'm also conducting leadership sessions with all of the school's admin teams where we're focus focusing on specific needs of each school and what, they, what work they want to do to improve the instructional practices in their building. So um, we have those intimate conversations. We look at their data. They work with their teachers in PLCs. And we've been focusing that on how can we improve student achievement. Good evening. Uh, so for those of you that are new, we have recently implemented a new reading program in our elementary schools. And so in September, November, January, and March, each elementary school has had the opportunity to engage with a core knowledge language arts, that's our reading program, or we call it CKLA, um, specialist. And they've either co-planned and co-taught or she has modeled lessons for our teachers. And this has provided teachers with the opportunity to ask questions and have their questions answered as we implement this new reading program. <clears throat> and so this has been very valuable for our teachers because as you know, in the first year, there's a lot of questions as we've moved from a balanced literacy approach to a more structured literacy. During the opposite months of our CKLA coaching, we have an elementary ELA and ML instructional specialist. She is also working with the schools to um, plan and facilitate sessions with teachers around our new reading program. We want to give teachers as much support as they can have, especially in this first year as they're learning new content and um, addressing the standards with a new program. 
In addition, um, we are lucky enough to have specialists that work with us, and we have an elementary and a secondary math specialist, and they have written and were awarded a si over $650,000 with the Reimagining Professional Learning Grant, and this has also benefited teachers. Um, in the elementary, they've had training with math recovery, and that allows them to focus on specific needs of students with math instruction and to address those needs. And then in secondary, the money is used for coaching and professional learning. And finally, I just want to share that I have recently met with the elementary principals to revisit and review the data that Dr. Jerns was talking about around the smarter assessment data because we are continually analyzing that. And so the principals work with their school teams to analyze that. And then we also administered the interim assessment um, block or IAB to all of our third graders because this will be the first time that they engage in this summative assessment in the spring. And so we wanted them to have that opportunity so that they could manipulate the platform and so that when we get to that summative in the spring, they can show what they know and not be held up by the testing platform itself. And in addition to that, by doing these assessments, our principals and our school teams receive data. And so it provides them student strengths and areas of growth so that they can continue to analyze the data and make those informed instructional decisions. Questions about anything that we've shared? Thank you. Great. Thank you both. Thank you. Yep. Eight point of five is the DSBA Board of Directors. I attend that, but then there's been no meeting. Eight oh six is DSBA Legislative. Doc Hadden. Uh, no meeting, and I don't know when the next one is. They haven't let us know yet. Eight point oh seven is Special Education Task Force. Dr. Statler. No report. Eight point eight is policy. Dr. Owens. Thank you. Uh, you'll see on board docs we have uh, first readings of JG student discipline. For those of you that were able to participate in the meeting, there are substantial changes to that policy based on uh, code changes, so we will bring that back next month. The second readings were for public complaints. That's KL, also BDDH, public participation at board meetings. And those two we are asking for uh, board approval this evening. Any so moved. A motion to accept a second reading. Second. Motion, we have a motion, a second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 8.09 IREA representative. Good evening. Uh, Blair Catlin Brown, mental health counselor assigned to middle school camp housed at SDSA and IREA Vice President for Teachers. I have a smattering of things tonight. Um, first of all, we have to send a huge congratulations to Melissa Abbott, the uh, scholarship chair for our IREA scholarship fundraiser. Um, the fundraiser was a huge success. We had almost 100 people attend throughout the night. Um, we raised a little bit over $3,500 which is a huge increase. Um, I will say we need about 500 more dollars. So if anybody's got it in you, or you know some people, <laughs> please send it um, to Melissa, because we, we very much want to get it to $2,000 a student. Um, and I will say, in talking to some people at the event from other districts, because I had invited some people, we have one of the largest scholarships in the state um, that we give to future educators. So I just think that's amazing. And again, Melissa did a fantastic job. Um, and next year we're looking at doing something maybe in the southern end of the state. So we're looking, or state, goodness, the district. So we're looking into that. So we'll keep you posted. So again, good job, Melissa. Um, you know, March is Arts in Our Schools Month. I, you know, I would be in trouble, I feel like, with my coworkers at SDSA if I didn't highlight that for a moment. I am so privileged to work with amazing artists to see our kids flourish under the arts education at SDSA. Um, I looked it up and I found that last year there was published a large scale um, controlled randomized study in Houston public schools and they found that a well-rounded arts education um, boosts uh, writing skills, increases social and emotional <coughs> skills, and boosts um, school engagement. So as I know we're looking at budgets and we're looking at what to cut and what to move around, I just need to point out that if you're ever in doubt about arts education, please stop by SDSA and see the amazing work that's happening every day. And our other schools. I mean, every school has an amazing arts program. 
um, and I've been thrilled to talk to some of our educators throughout the district. Uh, March is also Women's History Month, and since I looked it up, 77% of our profession are strong women. So we just have to thank all the strong ladies throughout history that got us here, and will continue to carry us along the way. But we would love more men. Let's recruit some more men into the profession, too. Um, lastly, you know, it's election season. It's here. Um, so first of all, we'd like to welcome our new District 1 um, board members. <coughs> Um, and congratulations, I believe you're unopposed, so we look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, I believe District 5 is unopposed, so we look forward to continuing to work with you guys. Um, and we were able to do some interviews for um, people who are running for the Board of Education, and that was a really good opportunity. Um, and we look forward to continuing to support those people and being able to spread the word out there to get people out for the election, because as we all know, for Board of Ed seats, any vote can matter because not enough people come out to them. So we are going to get people out on May 14th, I believe, to, out to the polls. Um, and I was able to attend um, DSEA's Representative Assembly um, on Saturday in Wilmington. It was amazing. We got to hear from all four of the gubernatorial candidates, um, which was fantastic. I think that's one of the strengths of having the union and having it be part of the conversation because we really are able to bring the state and local together. Um, so it was just fantastic to hear their point of view and just be able to spread that word down here because I didn't know, I knew who they were, but I didn't know what they kind of stood for. Um, and so we look forward to being able to continue to raise awareness of what the state can do for us because yes, we need the state to pick it up a little bit. You're right. Uh, and so we're going to keep working with them on that. Um, I think that's all I had for tonight. <coughs> Everyone, please rest over spring break. I don't know about you, but we're all tired. <laughs> and we cannot wait for this time Wednesday night. So enjoy your spring break. Have a wonderful Easter. Thank you. Isn't it amazing that somebody can talk about the positive effect of the arts and how it makes kids better, well-rounded, and yet we have a program that makes them make a choice? We move on to Superintendent's Report 9.01. Thank you. With, thank you. Within our board, your board docs is uh, a summary of my monthly activities. I, I would like to highlight uh, we were able to meet as a futures committee. Some of our board members were able to join that, where we looked at uh, the capacities at our various schools, the enrollment trends, um, and the impact of the move to the new Sussex Central High School. Uh, once it's complete and into the existing Sussex Central High School by the middle school and the potential use of the vacated uh, Millsboro Middle School. So lots of great discussion there. Thank you for those of you that were able to attend and we've gathered some very good data and uh, some options for our next meeting in April. Thank you. Thank you. And 9.02 is the district calendar changes for 24-25. Yes, yeah, so the first three are calendar changes for next year, and they're all related to our testing. Um, the first is Indian River and Sussex Central High School's 11th grade students only reporting for SAT testing on March 19th. And the next is March 26th, both at our two high schools, just 10th graders reporting for the PSAT <coughs> testing. And finally, April 2nd, 2025, only our ninth grade for uh, PSAT 9 testing, and that is because of the size of those um, classes at each school and the need for multiple staff to be able to support them, spread those students out to create a really uh, positive testing environment for our students. If we have all of our students in on those days, it becomes quite difficult on uh, multiple levels to uh, conduct a good, uh, to hold a good testing environment. So those are the first three. And finally, as mentioned this evening by Mr. Cathell, uh, the discussion at our Comprehensive School Safety Committee meeting with the change of Sussex Central's graduation from May 29th, 2024 at 7 p.m. to Saturday, June 1st, 2024 at 10 a.m. So that is uh, for your consideration as well. Thank you. Any questions? Entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Second. And a second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Financial reports, 10.01, financial summaries for month ending February 29th, 2024. Total budgeted revenue, 98% of discretion, budgeted discretionary revenue, and 100% of our budgeted local tax revenue. 
We received approximately $168,000 in interest on our local funds in February, have spent 57% of total budgeted expenses, 66% of total discretionary expenses, 62% of our tuition funded classroom budgets, and 72% of budgeted expenses at Howard TMs. Any questions? A motion to accept the report? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 10.02, detail re information for month ending February 29th, 2024. Yes, the student activity funding um, account has approximately 465,000 of unspent funds currently. Um, our ESSER funding that again expires September 30th, 2024, we have spent 26.2 or encumbered 26.2 million and have 4.6 million dollars remaining. We have 12.7 million dollars in federal funds available and we're holding approximately 1.3 million in donations and internal accounts. Any questions? A motion to accept? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 10.02. Major capital improvements for a month ending February 29th. For February, we paid out $2.9 million. Any questions? Motion to accept. So moved. Second. Do we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 10.04, minor cap improvements for a month ending February 29th. For the three years worth of minor cap funds that we have, we have spent or encumbered approximately 5.1 million and have 1.1 million remaining. Questions? Motion to accept? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Thank you. Communications. Thank you, Tammy. 11.01. .01. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. We have several uh, trips scheduled over the next couple months. Uh, as you know, around this time, we do uh, quite a bit of traveling, mostly associated with uh, attending national events that students have earned their way to participate in. So uh, I'll, I'll briefly run through these this evening. We're really proud of our students for their accomplishments at the local level, which qualify them to, to travel uh, across the country to participate. The first one is overnight trip by Indian River High School HOSA on June 25th to 30th to Houston, Texas. Uh, overnight trip by Long Neck uh, Vex Robotics, April 30th to May 4th to Dallas, Texas. Overnight trip Millsboro Middles Vex Robotics, April 30th to May 4th, also Dallas, Texas. Overnight trip Sussex Central High School's BPA, May 10th to 15th uh, to Chicago. The same trip, Indian River High School's BPA, the 10th to 14th, also to Chicago to the National Conference. Overnight trip, Millsboro Middle School's BPA, 10th to 14th, also to Chicago. Overnight trip, Selbyville Middle School BPA, again, same time to Chicago. And overnight trip by Selbyville Middle School's drone team, May 16th to 19th to Fairmont, West Virginia. Overnight trip by Sussex Central High School, Educators Rising, June 28th to July 1st to Washington, D.C. And finally, overnight trip by Selbyville Middle School's VEX Robotics team, June 26th to 30th, Orlando, Florida. Wow. Any questions? Motion to accept? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Personnel, 12.01, the personnel agenda for March the 25th, 2024. Any questions? I'd entertain a motion to accept. So, so moved. moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. 12.02, personnel addendum for March the 25th, 2024. Motion to accept? So moved. So moved. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. I don't remember having. I don't think we had any contractual. We don't have any contractual. Nope. And we don't. Uh, uh, 12.03, we have nothing on the contractual agenda. Uh, 13 comes to public comments. Uh, at this time, 
1301. We do not have anybody signed up, but now's an opportunity if anyone in the audience that has not spoken would like to do so, they may come forward at this time. See? Yes, ma'am. Could we have your... Um, Good evening. I didn't sign in. Sorry. It's okay. If you could just give us your name, please. Yes, Leanne Prosser. Good evening. I'm mother of Lyndon Prosser. He attends Sussex Central High School. I believe some of you have been briefed a little bit, but I'll give you a little background. Um, he started Sussex Central High School this year, coming from Worcester Preparatory School. He was there since pre-K. Lyndon is a good kid. He's a 4.0 student. He was admitted to the National Honor Society this year at Sussex Central and enjoys attending school there. Uh, he also is a passionate basketball lover, as am I, um, even though Syracuse didn't make the tournament this year. That's okay. Um, he also volunteers to take photos for several of the teams, even though he's just started at the school. He's made some friends and has enjoyed that experience. Um, unfortunately, um, we've had, I'm sure you're all aware, some negative experiences surrounding the basketball games during and after, um, to the point where I'm parking near the closest exit, not bringing my smaller children to attend the games with him or to see him play, genuinely out of fear of the environment. Um, while Mrs. Brittingham has been lovely and encouraging, I know that there was some beefed up police presence at the state tournament game. Lyndon was taking pictures as a volunteer for Coach Hopkins and the team to support the varsity. He's on JV. He's happy to make that team um, coming from Worcester. Um, that evening was great until we began to depart. I was sitting in the car while he was doing his videos of the team in the locker room, instructed him to meet me quickly because, to be honest with you, I don't want to hang out after the basketball games at Sussex Central for obvious reasons, um, major safety concerns. Um, he was out five minutes later, and about two seconds later after he got in the car, we heard really loud gunshots that sounded like they were right by our vehicle. It was difficult. It was alarming. Children and families were running back into the building pretty quickly. That was my first experience with anything like that, even though I went to school in New York and attended Milford High School and was a public school attendee and a public school teacher actually at once, at one point. In, earlier in my career. That evening was extremely alarming. Um, my nephew was in the building. He's thinking about his friends. We're trying to flee the scene in hopes of no one getting hurt, especially us, of course. Um, I drove the wrong way, almost hit a car. I mean, we were just trying to get to safety. You don't know really in that moment how you react. Um, and my teenager is sitting next to me. I did not take my younger children, who are 10 and 6 that evening, of course, uh, because we had already experienced a few quite alarming incidents at basketball games. 30 so, seconds. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm a little long-winded, but I'll get to the point. Um, I spoke to Lyndon, um, spoke to the, you know, Mrs. Brittingham, Mr. Owens, Ms. Flannard, uh, several people sent some emails to the board. Lyndon and I very much would like him to attend Indian River High School next year for multiple reasons that I'm sure you can understand. I was not prepared for this to occur, right? So it's not gonna be on your list of good cause bullet marks that are set forth for you to choose from to say yes to that. And I'm asking you tonight as a mother of a very good student and a good kid who is just now adjusting to a new high school so that he can continue to be comfortable and safe and involved in all aspects for the whole child of his schooling to allow him to attend Indian River High School next year. Um, I know I'm, I'm there, but I'm almost done. Uh, I did speak to the counselor and we had a tour. Mrs. Wilkinson, she was lovely at Indian River High School. I'd never met her. Um, but she and the counselor at Sussex Central and Lyndon and I agreed that a transition next year would be best and not in the middle of his semester. He does attend AC at Dell Tech and has AP classes and all of that. So um, I'm not asking for it this second, um, but I would really appreciate serious consideration given everything we've experienced in this short period of time for him to be able to attend and not make that a huge hurdle for us for next school year. And so I'm asking for board support this evening for that. I was under the impression that you were gonna be sharing that with the board tonight. So since it, I didn't hear that, I just figured I would put it out there myself this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else in the audience wish to come forward and speak? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. This meeting is adjourned.